Today I'm gonna be showing you how I make this 3D rotating phone effect in Apple Motion using only 2D elements, no plugins, nothing special, just the images and Apple Motion. This is an effect I love to use for my clients who have like a mobile aspect to their business, like they have a mobile app or there's something on their mobile site that they want their customers to see. So I definitely bring this effect out pretty often. It definitely has a wow factor. My clients love it and I love it too. Let me show you how I do it. So we're going to start a new motion project. The first thing I'm going to do is save my project because whenever we're working with replicators, which is how we're going to use this effect, sometimes motion can get a little testy. So I'm going to make sure I save this project. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is drop in a solid color into my project pane. Because the phone we're working with is gonna be black, it's just gonna help us see what we're doing. I'm going to make that color solid white. I'm just gonna add a vignette to it. Just to give it a little depth. And now we need to bring in our elements. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bring in what's gonna go inside my phone. I'm gonna drop it here into my project pane. And then I'm going to bring in an image of the front of a phone and an image of the back of a phone. So I'm gonna drop those in here as well. I'm gonna reorder these so that the image that's gonna be inside my phone is sandwiched between the image of the front and back of my phone. So the first thing I wanna do is turn off the front of my phone. I wanna turn off the screen record that's gonna go inside my phone. And I wanna actually flip this back image of the phone around. So let's go to filters, distortion, and flop. So now it's reversed. Now we're going to line everything up so everything's the same proper size and position so that they're all layered on top of each other perfectly. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to group these three elements together. So the front of my phone, the inside of the phone, and the back of the phone. I'm going to select them all in my project plane, right click and hit group. And now we can modify the phone as all one element. So the first thing I wanna do is just scale down the entire group. Now I could just go into the inspector window and add a drop shadow. Let me show you what that does. It gives you a drop shadow like behind the phone. And I actually want the drop shadow underneath the phone. So I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna go on over to this toolbar here in the middle of the screen. Um, I'm gonna use the shape tool to draw in a rectangle underneath the phone. And then I'm gonna head on over to the inspector window and hit shape to modify that shape. I'm gonna turn off outline. I'm gonna uh, turn on the fill and I'm gonna make that fill black. Then I'm gonna go on over here to geometry. Do you see this in the inspector window? And I'm gonna turn up the roundness so it becomes more of like a pill shape instead of a rectangle. And then I'm gonna go back over to style. I'm gonna feather that out and I'm going to dial down the opacity. Okay, now I'm gonna use the arrow tool to kind of just play with the shape of that drop shadow so it looks most realistic. I'm gonna feather this up more. All right, that looks pretty realistic to me. The next thing we wanna do is take our entire group, so that includes the drop shadow, the front of the phone, the screen record that goes inside the phone, and the back of the phone. I'm gonna click on over to properties in the inspector window, and I'm gonna rotate this on the Y axis so we can see the depth of it. So right now it's all 2D images, so there, it really has no depth. We're gonna change that. And what I'm going to do is replicate the front of the phone to add depth. So I'm gonna select just the front of our phone, and then I'm gonna hit this replicate button at the top right of the screen. And it's given me 
a whole bunch of versions of the front of our phone, if you can see that. Um, so we need to make some modifications here, obviously. I am going to select uh, for shape instead of rectangle, which is the default, we're gonna make it a line. So now they're all on a line on the X axis. I'm gonna hit the 3D button to check this box here to make us be able to modify the element on the Z axis, not just the X axis and the Y axis. So the first thing I wanna do is change my start point to zero on the X axis. I wanna change my end point to zero also on the X axis. At this point, I wanna add a camera to our project to make the whole thing 3D. So let's draw our attention up to the top middle of the screen where we see this button add object. I'm going to select that and go down to camera. And that's gonna ask me, do you wanna to switch to 3D? Yes, I do. Thanks for asking. And what happens is that half of our phone disappears. That is because the background, the white background and the phone are on the same plane. So when you rotate the phone on the Y axis, like we did, let me just show you, the back half of the phone is now behind the white background. So what do we need to do? We need to select our color solid at the bottom of our project pane, and we need to change the Z value on the position to a negative number to back it up. There goes our whole phone. Now, obviously it's not filling the whole canvas. We can fix that just by scaling it up. So now we've got our 3D phone. It is entirely in front of the white background. You can see when I flip around, we do see the back of the phone, but when we're at this angle, there's like no depth, so we need to fix that. So what we need to do is select the replicator in our project pane, and we need to select the replicator tab on our inspector window, and we need to change the end point of the Z value. So I'm just gonna grab this zero here, I'm gonna click down my mouse, and I'm gonna punch it up. So now you can see all the different versions of my, the front of my phone are now coming out on the Z axis, they're coming forward. We can make it really deep. See, or we can make it a little narrower. Now, if you see here, you can see all these different lines and you can very easily see the individual elements, the fronts of our phone. We wanna actually make it look like one solid piece. So what we need to do is look down here at points. See here, it's got a value of five, that is the default. And that means that there's five versions of the front of our phone in our replicator. We wanna make way more versions of that because we want this to appear to be a solid object. So I'm just gonna keep pumping that up. Yeah, there we go. So now that looks like a solid phone. And now I can just play with the Z value on our endpoint and decide how deep I want that phone to be. We're gonna look for something more realistic. So I'm gonna eyeball and say, that looks right. I'm gonna go on over to the group. I'm gonna select the group in our project pane. I'm gonna select properties in the inspector window and again, play with the rotation on that Y axis so I can really see, does this look like it's correct? And I must say, I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you do look at this though, it looks like the screen is like deep down inside the phone and that's not right. We all know that the screen is flush with the rest of the phone's body. So we're gonna have to play with that a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in tighter on my canvas so I can really get a good look at what's going on here. Now I'm gonna go on over to the project pane. I'm gonna select my video clip, so my screen recording, and I'm gonna change the position of this on the Z axis. So we're under properties in the inspector window and I'm just pushing this forward. Okay, to me, that looks good. I'm gonna turn off the overlays. Sometimes I find that they get a little in the way. Yeah, see, I've got corners going here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip it back a little bit. There we go. So now all we need to do is animate this phone just to give it a little life and show that it's a 3D object. So I'm gonna grab the group that houses all of our elements, the back of the phone, the screen record, the front of the phone replicated, and the drop shadow. I'm gonna queue up my playhead 
to toward the beginning of my project and we're gonna go on over to the inspector window and just add some keyframes here. I'm going to click this little box to add keyframes to all of my position values, the X, Y, and Z positions. I'm also going to add keyframe under rotation. Let's set our phone where we want it to start. So I would like for it to start toward the left side of the frame. I do like that it's kind of on this Y rotation here. So it looks 3D right off the bat. Then I'm gonna take my playhead and I'm gonna cue it up to about the middle of my project. I'm gonna again add keyframe, so position and rotation. And so at this point, I would like the phone to be at the center of the frame. So I'm just changing that X value. And then I want it to be flipped around so we see the back of it. So I'm gonna modify that Y rotation. And now we see the back of the phone. And if you'll notice the drop shadow is coming along for the ride, which is exactly what we want. Then I'm gonna cue up my playhead in the timeline to toward the end. I'm gonna add keyframes again, position, rotation. Obviously, if you really wanted to get into this, you could be modifying the scale. You could be flipping it you know, on the Z axis or the Y axis. I'm just gonna do like a quick spin around the screen for you here. And I'm going to modify that X position to the right side of the screen. And then we're gonna rotate the Y axis. So now we're facing front. And let me just scrub my playhead to show you. Flip, 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 flip. Cool, right? And then the only other adjustment I'm going to make is I'm going to modify my keyframes here. I'm just gonna select all my keyframes and then I'm gonna right click on one of them and I'm gonna change the interpolation to ease both. So it's not such a linear movement. So let's export and take a look at our finished movie. So this type of technique works with a lot of different objects. I love it for the iPhone because the iPhone does have that like flat edge all the way around. So this looks really great, but you can still use this effect. I do this a lot with iPads where I don't have it flip all the way around because the shape of an iPad is a lot different than a phone, but I do have it like rotate on that Y axis and I do have it come at an angle so you can see that it looks really 3D. This is also great for logos. This replicator is, you know, it's something a little more complicated in motion. It's something that takes a little more understanding of three-dimensional space, but once you get it, it's such a great effect. It really wows people, and I definitely love using this all the time. You guys, let me know. Do you want me to show you more stuff in Apple Motion? It's not really a, something I've talked a lot about on my channel, but I do have people asking me about it. So let me know if you enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.